All right, 8-3, quadratic equations. Um, well, we've already technically done quadratic equations. This is when we did, oh, that's a better plus there, the FOIL method. So if I did the FOIL method on this, I would take first times first, outside times outside, inside times inside, and then last times last. That would combine, combine my like terms. Okay. x squared plus 6x plus 8 is a quadratic equation. And so now I'm going to ask you to take x squared plus 6x plus 8, and we are going to factor it, which means we're going to deconstruct it. We're going to take x squared plus 6x plus 8 and find out how to make it look like x plus 2 times x plus 4 again. Okay, so here's what we want to do. We know that in our last term, we multiply the 2 times 8. So we need to find all of the ways that I can multiply to get 8. Okay, so we're going to take a little chart here. And there will be another side to this. We'll get to that in just a second. So how can I multiply to get 8? Well, I can do 1 times 8. I could do 2 times 4. I could also do, because a negative times a negative equals a positive, I could do negative 1 times negative 8 and negative 2 times negative 4. Now, what I want you to do with these factors is I want you to find their sum. Okay, Again, sum means addition. So 1 plus 8 is going to be 9. 2 plus 4 is going to be 6. Negative 1 plus negative 8 is going to be negative 9. Negative 2 plus negative 4 is negative 6. Now tell me on that sum list, okay, which one gives me the middle term of 6? And that's right here. So my factors of this equation are going to be 2 and 4. Well, I know it's a trinomial, so I'm going to, um, let me erase a little bit here so I can get some more room, because we already know how to do the FOIL method. I know that I'm going to need two parentheses, and I know when I do my first terms, the only way I can get x squared is x times x, and then I have found my factors over here to be positive 2 and positive 4. So I just come over and put positive 2 and positive 4. So the relationship is it multiplies to get the final number, and it adds to get the middle number. Okay. Now, from this point, I could take it one step further. I have factored it. Now I want to solve it. Well, these are called the zeros which is what we worked on in class yesterday. So I'm going to take each one of these factors and I'm going to set it equal to 0 because this is actually where it will hit the x-axis. And then I just solve. This one I'm going to subtract 2 to the other side so that gives me negative 2. This one I'm going to subtract 4 to the other side so that gives me negative 4. So they may just ask you to factor. If they ask you to factor, then you stop here. If they ask you to solve, then they want you to take the factors and set them equal to 0. And that's where we get negative 2 and negative 4. So let's take a look at another one. 
Okay, here's my second one, x squared minus 8x plus 12. I know I'm going to always start with two sets of parentheses. I know at the beginning of my parentheses is always going to be x in this lesson. The next lesson will have some that are a little bit different, but for now we're just going with x. And now I'm going to go over here and do my factor. and sum tree. Again, sum means plus. Do my factor and sum tree. And I am looking for factors of 12. Okay, so let's go through my factors. Um, I've got 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, and then obviously I have the same ones, um, I can do negative 1 times negative 12, negative 2 times negative 6, and negative 3 times negative 4. Again, that's only because my answer is positive, and positive times positive is a positive, and negative times negative is a positive. So let's go over here and do the sums of these. Let me extend this just a little bit. 1 plus 12 is 13. 2 plus 6 is 8, 3 plus 4 is 7, negative 1 plus negative 12 is negative 13, negative 2 plus negative 6 is negative 8, and negative 3 plus negative 4 is negative 7. Now, obviously the number we're looking for is negative 8, so my factors are negative 2 and negative 6. So x minus 2, x minus 6, and that is factored. Now, if they ask me to solve it, again, I tee it up and set each factor equal to zero. And I end up with negative two and, uh, excuse me, positive two and positive six. You don't have to put the positives there. I just did that because I messed up that negative over there. So positive 2 and positive 6. Again, this is factored. And this is solved. Watch the directions. Make sure you know what they want. OK, let's get one more example. OK, final example. This looks just a little bit different. It's got a negative at the end instead of the beginning. So when I go through the factors, it'll be done just a little bit differently. Start every problem the same. Start with your parentheses. We know it's going to be x and x. And then let's go to our factors and our sums. Now, this time I'm doing a negative 15, so it's very specific. I can't do 1 times 15 because that's positive 15. Okay, so I can do negative 1 times 15. I can do negative 3 times 5. And then I have to switch them around because I could do negative 15 times 1. And I could also do negative 5 times 3. Again, if you go down, it's a negative times a positive, negative times a positive. Um, so now let's find the sums. What's negative 1 plus 15? That's going to give me 14. Negative 3 plus 5, that's going to give me positive 2. Negative 15 plus 1 is negative 14. And negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. So I am looking for a positive 2, which is right here. So my factors are negative 3 and 5. So it's x minus 3 x plus 5. Okay, so that gives me my factors. Again, pay attention to directions. We're going to go ahead and solve this. So I do both steps. And uh, I have x minus 3 equals 0. And I have x plus 5 equals 0. Add 3 to the other side. That's going to give me x equals 3. Subtract 5 to the other side. That's going to give me x equals negative five. Okay, so that is factoring trinomials. About 10 minutes. Hope you have had a good weekend. 
We'll see you in the morning.